the two men you sent have arrived here, bringing your various offerings. I also received a message from the priest Nisho regarding your faith. In this letter I want to advise you about what is most important for you. In the former and middle days of the law, the world did not fall into decline because saints and sages appeared frequently and the gods protected the people. In the latter day of the law, however, people have become so greedy that strife rages incessantly between sovereign and subject, parent and child, elder and younger brother, and all the more so among people who are unrelated. When such conflict occurs, the gods abandon the country and then the three calamities and seven disasters begin, until one, two, three, four, five, six or seven suns appear in the sky. Plants wither and die, large and small rivers dry up, the earth smolders like charcoal and the sea becomes like boiling oil. Eventually flames fill the atmosphere, arising from the hell of incessant suffering and reaching the Brahma heaven. Such is the devastation that will occur when the world reaches its final dissolution. Everyone, whether wise or foolish, considers it natural for children to obey their parents, for subjects to be loyal to their sovereign, and for disciples to follow their master. Recently, however, it appears that the people of our day, drunk with the wine of greed, anger and stupidity, make it a rule to betray their sovereign, despise their parents and scoff at their teachers. You should read again and again the previous letter in which I explained that one should of course obey his parents as well as his sovereign and teacher, but should they commit evil, admonishing them is in fact being loyal to them. Recently your elder brother, Yuman no Sakan, was again disowned by your father. I told your wife when she came to visit me here that he was certain to be disowned again, and since your faith was quite unstable, she should be prepared for the worst. This time I am sure that you will give up your faith. If you do, I have not the slightest intention of reproaching you for it. Likewise, neither should you blame me, Nichiren, when you have fallen into hell. It is in no way my responsibility. It is an undeniable fact that fire can at once reduce even a thousand-year-old field of pampas grass to ashes, and that the merit one has formed over a hundred years can be destroyed with a single careless word. Your father now seems to have become the enemy of the Lotus Sutra, yet your brother will now become one of its votaries. You, who think only of immediate affairs, will obey your father, and deluded people will therefore praise you for your filial devotion. Munamori obeyed his father's tyrannous commands and was finally beheaded at Shinohara. Shigemori disobeyed his father and preceded him in death. Who was truly the better son? If you obey your father who is an enemy of the Lotus Sutra and abandon your brother who is a votary of the supreme teaching, are you then being filial? In the final analysis, what you should do is resolve to pursue the way of Buddhism single-mindedly just as your brother is doing. Your father is like King Mayashagan and you brothers are like the princes Jozo and Jogan. The age is different but the principle of the Lotus Sutra remains the same. Recently Hojo Yoshimasa, the lord of Musashi province, abandoned his vast territory and his many subjects in order to retire from all worldly affairs. If you ingratiate yourself with your father for the sake of a small private estate, neglect your faith and fall into the evil states of existence, you should not blame me, Nichiren. Yet despite this warning, I feel that this time you will discard your belief. I state this out of pity because you have been faithful until now, but you may fall into the evil states of existence in spite of your past faith. If, by one chance out of a hundred or a thousand, you should decide to follow my advice, then confront your father and say, since you are my father, I should by rights obey you, but since you have become an enemy of the Lotus Sutra, I would be unfilial if I were to do so in this matter. Therefore, I have resolved to break with you and follow my brother. If you should disown him, be aware that you are disowning me too. You should not have the slightest fear in your heart. It is lack of courage that prevents one from attaining Buddhahood, although he may have professed faith in the Lotus Sutra many times since the remotest past. There is definitely something extraordinary in the ebb and flow of the tide, the rising and setting of the moon, and the way in which summer, autumn, winter and spring give way to each other. Something uncommon also occurs when an ordinary person attains Buddhahood. At such a time, the three obstacles and four devils will invariably appear, and the wise will rejoice while the foolish will retreat. I have long been waiting to tell you this, either through my own messenger or by some other means. 
so I greatly appreciate your sending these messengers to me. I am sure that if you were about to abandon your faith, you would not have sent them. Thinking it may still not be too late, I am writing this letter. To attain Buddhahood is difficult indeed, more difficult than the feat of placing a needle atop the Mount Sumeru of this world and then casting a thread from atop the Mount Sumeru of another world directly through the eye of this needle. And the feat is even more difficult if it must be done in the face of a contrary wind. The Lotus Sutra states, during countless millions and millions of eons of inconceivable duration, rare are the times when this Lotus Sutra has been heard. During countless millions and millions of eons of inconceivable duration, rare are the times when the Buddhas, the world-honored ones, preach this sutra. Therefore, the practitioners after the Buddha's death, on hearing such a sutra as this, should not have any doubts. This passage is extremely unusual even among the 28 chapters of the Lotus Sutra. From the Jo to the Hashi chapters, humans, heavenly beings, the four kinds of believers and the eight kinds of lowly beings below the stage of Tagaku were many in number, but there was only one Buddha, Shakyamuni. Thus, these chapters are more important than the pre-Lotus Sutra teachings but less important than those chapters of the Lotus Sutra which describe the ceremony in the air. The twelve chapters from Hato to Zokurui are the most important of all. This is because in the presence of Shakyamuni Buddha there appeared a tower decorated with many treasures. It was as if the sun had risen in front of the moon. All the Buddhas in the universe were seated under the trees, and it seemed as though the light of a fire shone over all the grass and trees in the universe. It was in this setting that the above passage was expounded. The Nirvana Sutra states, people have been suffering since uncountable eons ago. The bones each individual leaves behind in an eon pile up as high as Mount Vipula in Rajagriya, and the milky sucks is equal to the water of the four oceans. The blood one shed surpasses the quantity of water in the four oceans, and so do the tears he sheds in grief over the death of parents, brothers and sisters, wives, children and relatives. And though one used all the plants and trees growing in the earth to make four-inch tallies to count them, one could not count all the parents one has had in the past existences of life. These are the words the Buddha uttered lying in the grove of sal trees on the final day of his earthly life. You should pay the strictest attention to them. They mean that the number of parents who gave birth to you since innumerable eons ago could not be counted even with tallies made by cutting all the plants and trees growing on all the worlds of the universe into four-inch pieces. Thus you have had a countless number of parents in your past existences, yet during that time you have never encountered the Lotus Sutra. From this we see that it is easy to have parents, but very difficult to encounter the Lotus Sutra. Now if you disobey the words of a parent, one who is easy to come by, and follow a friend of the Lotus Sutra, one who can rarely be encountered, you will not only be able to attain Buddhahood, but will also be able to lead to enlightenment the parent whom you disobeyed. For example, Prince Siddhartha was the eldest son of King Shuddhodana. His father wanted him to succeed to the throne and rule the nation, and actually ceded the throne to him, but the prince went against his father's wishes and escaped from the castle at night. The king was angry at him for being unfilial, but after Siddhartha had attained Buddhahood, he set about first of all to save his parents. King Shuddhodana and Lady Maya. No parent would ever urge his son to renounce the world in order to attain enlightenment. But however that may be, in your case, the priests and followers of the Ritsu and Nembutsu sects have egged on your father to join with them so that they may make both you and your brother abandon your faith. I am told that Ryoka Bo is persuading others to chant one million Nembutsu in an attempt to cause discord among people and destroy the seeds of the Lotus Sutra. Hojo Shigatoki, who built Gokuraku-ji Temple Fo Ryokan, seemed to be an admirable person. But deluded by the Nembutsu believers, he treated me with enmity, and as a result, he and his entire clan have been all but ruined. Only Hojo Naritoki, lord of Ichigo province, has survived. You may think that those who believe in Ryoka Bo are prospering, but you should see what has become of the Nago clan, who paid for the building of Zenko-ji temple, Koraku-ji temple in a temple to house a huge image of the Buddha. Again, Hojo Tokimune is the ruler of Japan, but by his conduct he has called down on himself an enemy almost as great as the entire world. Even if you abandon your brother and take his place in your father's favor, you will never prosper in 10 million years. 
there is no knowing what will become of you even in the near future you may face ruin in this very lifetime. Therefore, you should resolve to give all your thought to your next existence. Having written all this, it occurs to me that this letter may be futile and I tire of going on. That it may serve as a reminder to you in the future. With my deep respect, Nichiren. The 20th day of the 11th month. Background. This letter was written to Hayoi no Sakan Munenaga, the younger of the Ikigami brothers, on Noem Beer 20, 1277, three years after Nichiren Daishonin returned from exile on Sado Island. The two Ikigami brothers, Yumin no Sakan Munenaka and Hayoi no Sakan Munenaga, were converted to the Daishonin's Buddhism at about the same time as Shio Kingo. The elder, Munenaka, was the first to accept the faith, probably in 1256, and his younger brother, Mu Naga, followed soon after. Both were officials in the Kamakura Sogonate and their father, Yusumitsu, held an important post in the government construction office. Yusumitsu was a devout follower of Ryokan, the chief priest of the Ritsu sect who was highly active in political affairs. Therefore Munenaka and Munenaga met with stubborn opposition from their father in their Buddhist practice. In April of 1275, Yusumitsu disowned his elder son, who was stronger and more confident in his faith. On hearing the news, the Daishonin wrote the letter to the brothers, to encourage the two by stating that Munanaka's disinheritance was an obstacle of the sort that invariably arises when one earnestly pursues enlightenment, and that, by overcoming this obstacle, they could both change their destiny and gain happiness. No matter how offensive his son's religion might have seemed to Yusumitsu, there must have been some other provocation to cause him to take so extreme a measure. The Daishonin suspected Ryokan's hand in this affair. Ryokan had long since abandoned any direct attacks on Nichiren Daishonin, but he could easily apply pressure on his own followers. Evidence shows that he persuaded the father, Yusumitsu, to take action against this sons. By disowning Munanaka, Yusumitsu in effect was provoking a rift between the two sons, tempting the weaker Munenaga to trade his beliefs for the right to inherit his father's estate. Yusumitsu failed in this attempt and forgave Munanaka. However, he disowned Munanaka again in 1277, which seems to have greatly shaken the younger Munenaga's confidence. In this letter, the three obstacles and four devils, Nichiren Daishonin taught Munenaga the true meaning of filial piety which is, to convert one's parents to faith in true Buddhism and encouraged him to persist in his faith throughout his life, citing the example of Jozo and Jogen. Thereafter, supported by the Daishonin's guidance and encouragement, Munenaga upheld his faith together with his brother, and in 1278, after a total of 22 years practice, their united efforts finally led their father to accept faith in Nichiren Daishonin's Buddhism.